In this tutorial, we're going to look at a great formative assessment tool called Formative. A very original name, right? And the website for this is GoFormative.com. And a while ago, I made a formative tutorial, but so much has changed, I felt like I needed to make an updated video. So here it is. And formative is similar to several other formative assessment tools like Kahoot, Socrative, quizzes, and so many others. It's a great way for teachers to gather information from a group of people, formative assessment information specifically. Now, one of the things that sets formative apart a little bit from the other tools is that the teacher can see exactly the work that the students are doing while they're doing it. So, for example, here we have a question that a teacher has asked of his or her students, and each student is answering in his or her own way. Some of them are drawing their responses, some of them are typing their answers, but as they type and as they draw, the teacher can see what they're doing. And so if you choose to, as the teacher, you could go over to one of the students and say, I like what you're thinking here, but notice the mistake you're making and you could correct them right then and there if you feel like that's effective. So that's one of the things that I think sets formative apart from the other formative assessment tools that might be more famous. So let's get started using formative. I'm just gonna go here in the upper right corner and click sign up. I'm a teacher, so I'll pick that. Teacher sign up, it's 100% free, no credit card required, and that's true up to a point. You can use the website for free, there are some advanced options that are held back unless you upgrade to a paid account. At this point, I could put in an email and password, but I'm just gonna click sign in with Google and I'll link it to my Google account. So give me a couple of seconds to do that and I'll resume the video. Okay, now that I've connected it to my Google account, now it wants me to choose my school. So you can do a search, I'll try Lincoln. If your school isn't listed there though, you can just click this, my school isn't listed, and you can put in the name and the city of your school. Then you need to put in what your students call you, and then click let's go. Next, I need to put the grade levels that I teach into this form, and you can put more than one grade level if you'd like. Also subject area, and you can even select the specific standards that you need to follow, if you would like to. I'll just click all done, and it takes me in to my new formative account, if you accept the terms. Now, because I have used formative with this account before, you can see that there's already a formative activity here, but in most cases, you won't see anything here. It'll just be a blank page because you haven't created anything yet. So let's start creating. I'm gonna click this new formative button, and it takes me to a screen where I get to name the formative assessment activity that I'm about to create. So let's say I'm a Spanish one teacher and we're gonna be learning the animal words in Spanish. So I'll just call this Spanish animal vocabulary. If I want to, I can click here to change the color associated with this activity. So you can see it basically just affects the header at this point. I like that one, I'll stick with that. As an alternative, you can also add an image if you would prefer. So I selected an image and put it in as the banner picture for this activity. Kind of hard to see what it is though. I actually prefer just a solid color, so I'm just gonna switch to this gray background. Okay, at this point I have this cute little bouncing plus sign. It wants me to add something to this activity that I'm making for my students. Before I do that though, here at the right, notice that it says assignment type. What kind of an assignment is this? Is it just a run of the mill assignment? Or is it a benchmark assessment? Is it classwork? Is it an exit ticket? There are lots of different options for how to categorize this activity. I'm just gonna call it an assignment. I'll click the bouncing plus sign, and it opens up with a whole series of options that I have. Each of these is an item that I can add to this activity for my students. Now, from this point on, you'll notice this cute yet nefarious star from time to time. If you see that star, it means that you're looking at a premium feature, something that you would have to pay in order to use. So I'll skip those things that have the star. The first example I'd like to share is embed code. I can start this activity with an embedded item for my students to participate in or to look at, depending on what it is. So I'm gonna open a tab and I'll just head over to Quizlet and I'll do a search for Spanish animals. 
If you're not familiar with Quizlet, you should consider watching my Quizlet tutorial, but it's a great way to create or use digital flashcards. So here's a flashcard set, and it's got pictures and the Spanish words that match those pictures. So I would like to embed that into my activity in Formative, but how would I do that? Basically, on Quizlet.com, I would just go here to these three dots and choose Embed, click, and then I'll copy the HTML code. Now, back in Formative, I'll click Embed, and it gives me a box in which I can paste the embed code, and look what happens. It pulls in the Quizlet activity, the flashcards in this case, and puts those flashcards in my Formative activity or assignment. I can now click down here on the plus sign again and add something else. Next, I'd like to add an image. So I'll click there on image. I can upload a file or I can copy from my Google Drive account. I'll just click upload file and there's the image I would like to use in my project. And so I'll just double click on it. It opens it up and pulls it into my formative activity. Now you'll notice that this image happens to be a GIF or a GIF, depending on how you pronounce that. It's an animated GIF. And I just wanted to demonstrate that, that you can use a variety of images in your formative activities. Next, I'll click the plus sign again. And I just want you to see you can also add a text block in which you can type instructions that you want the students to see. It could be vocabulary lists. It could be whatever you want, anything text-based. And then you can just click the plus sign again to add even more items. This interface is really pretty easy to use once you get the hang of it. Next, I can add a video. And notice all you have to do to bring in a YouTube video is to paste in the URL, the address for the video. So I have a YouTube video that I found earlier. I paste it in the address, I click Update, and it brings in that video embedded into my activity. I'll click the plus sign again. The last item in this particular list that I can add is a whiteboard. Now I should have pointed out at the beginning Notice what kind of items I've been adding. So far, it's been what they call content. So images, embed codes, text, video. These are things for the students to see, to learn from, etc. And then next to that, I have a list of questions that I can add. So that's the distinction between the two. Things that they can learn from, that they can read and watch, and then questions that they're expected to actually answer. So let's look at the last type of content teachers can add, and that's a whiteboard. So I'll click on the whiteboard button, and it basically gives me an opportunity to draw something for the students to look at and hopefully learn from. So I can click Edit Whiteboard, and I can just use the mouse to draw out something on the screen. Now, if you have trouble with this, which I certainly do, then we do have an option to just click here where it says Text, and you can click on the screen and just type your message. In addition to this really fine point that I have, I can make it a lot thicker, and I'll go back, and as long as I have this selected, I can draw with that thicker line. And then there's some shapes. There's some lines and squares and rectangles and circles that I can add to this whiteboard drawing. I can also pull in images if I would like to. I'll try to bring in that same animated GIF and see what happens. And there it is, it doesn't look like it's animating, but that's okay. There's an eraser I can use, and an undo button. Now, up here at the top, we do have some other colors in addition to black, so don't feel like you're stuck just with black. And I think this looks about right, so I'll call this Done. I'll click the Done button in the upper right, and let's look at what we have so far. And the best way to review what you've done so far is to use this Preview button in the upper right corner. I'll click that and it gives me the student view. If I had students in this class, what would the activity look like for them? And you can say on a phone, on a tablet, or on a computer. So let's look at the computer example. So my students should be able to click to see the words and also to hear them in some cases. So that's the Quizlet flashcard activity. Here's my animated GIF that's just lovely. And underneath that, the video that I embedded from YouTube, very nice and my wonderful whiteboard drawing. At this point, I'm going to X out of the preview window because I need to now add some opportunities to gather formative assessment data from my students. And to do that, I'll go to this trusty plus sign, click the button, and let's add a few different question types. The first type of question is an essay. 
Now, if I change my mind about this first question, I can click this arrow and I could switch it to a multiple choice or a short answer or whatever I want. But essay is what I wanted here. So I click to type my question, write at least one page, explaining how your knowledge of the Spanish animal vocabulary will help you in your life. Next, if I want to, I can give this a certain number of points. By default, it's just worth one point, but it is an essay, so I'll say 10 points. And then I'll just move on to the next question. Question two happens to be multiple choice. So I click there, type my question. Which of these words means bear in Spanish? That's a good question. And I can now click to type in the correct answers. Give me a minute to type in a few answers and I'll resume the video. So there are the possible answers. Notice that there is a great option to randomize the order. Unfortunately, that's for paying customers only. Now, before I leave this particular question, I should mark the correct answer, which is oso. So I'll click there to add a check mark, and now I'm done. Let's look at the next kind of question that you can add. You could add a multiple selection question, which is very much like multiple choice, except that the students can choose more than one possible answer. Instead of actually creating this one, I'm going to skip ahead and go to short answer. It's warning me that if anyone has already answered this question, it's going to delete their answers. I'm not worried about that at this point, so I'll click change question type. And this is similar to the essay question, except a lot shorter. So type the Spanish word for cat. Now in this case, there is a definite correct answer. So I can click add a correct answer, and I can put in the word for cat. However, there are multiple possible correct answers. So I can add each of those just by continuing to click add a correct answer. Awesome, I think that's good the way it is. I'll just click the plus sign to show you that there is true or false, which is very similar to multiple choice, as you would expect. And the one that I think might be the best, most exciting option here is show your work. When you choose that question type, just like with the others, you can type your question in the box. And this could be a math question where the students have to reduce the fractions to the lowest common denominator, or multiply fractions, or maybe they're doing long division, or it could be a drawing, or any number of other things, verb conjugations, whatever it might be. For this example, I'll just say, draw un elefante. Should be pretty easy. At this point, I consider this assignment, this activity for my students, to be completed and ready for prime time. Let's look at how I would assign this out to my students. Up here at the top of the screen, you can see it says assign or share. If I click that, it gives me two options for sharing this activity. I could assign it to students in my class or I could share it with colleagues. And actually you can do both. If I share it with colleagues, if I had a team premium paid account, I could add collaborators and we could work together with each other in building this activity. You can give a copy of your formative activity. This link will take people to my exact activity. And if they have this code, they can copy this activity of mine into their own accounts. If you're really proud of your formative activity, you can also publish it to the formative library. And to do so, you would just need to fill in this form and then click Publish. In most cases, though, you're either going to be giving a copy or you're going to be assigning to students. Let's look at assigning to students. The first time you use Formative, you won't have any classes listed here. So you'll need to click Add New Class, give it a name, and a two-letter abbreviation. Pick a class color and then click Create Class. So here's the class. Now for me to assign the Spanish animal vocabulary to my Spanish one class, all I have to do is put a check mark in this circle. If I want to, I can assign it to more than one class. And it gives me a few extra options and settings. I can have it show scores or not. I can let the students see the correct answer or not. And there's an option to let the students edit their work after final submission. So it's up to you to decide those options. I'll just click assign and it explains how the students will participate in this activity. They'll need to go to GoFormative.com, log into their student accounts, and then click Spanish Animal Vocabulary and participate in it. I want you to see what this looks like for the students, so I'm going to minimize that pop-up, and I'm going to back out of this activity because I need to do some things with my classes. So far, I've just focused on formatives. I created a new formative. But if I go here to the Classes tab, look, it shows the class that I already had, and also the class I created 
I need to get some students in this class in order for them to participate in my formative activities. So to do that, I just need to make a note of this, the class code. This is the code that students will need in order to join this class. I could click Add Students, and I could create their accounts myself, putting in first name, last name, username, password, and then create those students. But trust me, in most cases, that's kind of a headache. So instead, if your students are old enough to use the internet and to make their own accounts, you can just send them to GoFormative.com, and they set up an account just like I did, except they choose a student account. They put in this class code, and they'll be added to this specific class. So give me a minute to set up a student account, and then I'll show you what it looks like when a student experiences a formative activity. So let's pretend now I'm a student. I'm logging into my formative account. I put in my username and password, click login. It takes me to my student account, and I can see there's an activity that I'm expected to complete. I click open, and I can see right away that there are four parts to it, four questions. I can participate in the flashcard activity, there's the animated GIF, isn't that cute? There's my text, my YouTube video, and my whiteboard. Here are the questions. Now, of course, I could have interspersed these. The questions don't have to all be at the end. You can set it up however you want. But here, the students can type their essays. They can put in the answers to their questions, and they can draw. Now, I want to shrink the screen a little bit because there's something going on here that's not apparent unless you see the teacher account and the student account at the same time. So here at the left is the student account. Here at the right is the teacher account. If I go back as a teacher into the formatives list and choose the activity that's happening right now, I can click the View Responses button and I can open up the particular activity that's being completed and look, I can see what Freddie is typing in his formative activity. That's his essay. That's his multiple choice response. And let's say he changes his mind and switches. Almost immediately, as the teacher, I see that switch. Oh, so there's the right answer. And as the teacher, I'm happy he, he actually got the right answer. Here's question three. But again, if Freddie decides to try again or change his answer, it updates for the teacher as well. Now watch this for the drawing activity. Draw un elefante. The student clicks, show your work. This panel opens up, and Freddie, the student, gets to draw an elephant. And notice what's happening for the teacher. There is a little bit of a lag, but the teacher is able to watch as the student draws the picture. Now with a drawing like this, it's kind of fun to watch, but maybe it's not crucial, right? But imagine instead of drawing an elephant, what if a student were showing how to conjugate verbs in Spanish? Okay, that looks a little creepy. Or how to reduce fractions. I think it would be very important and very useful for the teacher to be able to see the errors that the student's making or to see the thought process that the student is going through. Now imagine, instead of just one student doing this activity and submitting their answers, yes, submit, instead of just one student, imagine a class full of students. As the teacher, I would be able to see all of their answers here. It can show a whole class of students. When we're done with the activity, I can just click on totals, and it shows me the grand total. It shows me that Freddie got 15%. Now, some of this needs to be graded, like the essay question. I can also export the results. You can see that exports are limited a little bit in the free account, but still very useful. Here in my formative homepage, I want you to know that there's also a tracker that I can click, and it tracks all of the students, or you can pick a specific class of students. You can see what the progress is and how they're doing on the activities. So I find formative to be a really good formative assessment tool and it does stand out in some important ways, such as the ability to draw and for the teacher to be able to see what the students are doing while they're doing it. Thanks for watching. I hope that you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter.
and definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And when you do subscribe, please click the bell next to the subscribed button. That way you'll be notified whenever I post another video and watch for another video from me at least every Monday. If you'd like to support my YouTube channel, consider becoming a supporter of mine through my Patreon account, and you'll find links to that in the description below.